Contribution theory states that people attempt to understand others' behavior by assigning feelings, beliefs, and intentions to the person or situation. Sometimes we believe that behavior is due to dispositional attributions or stable enduring traits. Other times we might consider situational attributions, external factors such as situations, time, and place. The fundamental attribution error is the tendency to overestimate the role of dispositional factors in other people's behavior and to underestimate the role of situational factors. For example, believing your awful roommate failed a test because they're lazy. At the same time, we tend to overattribute situational factors in our own behaviors. So if we fail a test, it's because the professor is mean or made the test too hard. Much like behavior, attitudes or stable ways of thinking based on personal evaluation and beliefs, can also be influenced by both situational pressures and internal pressures. Self-perception theory suggests that individuals form attitudes by evaluating behavior, meaning that our attitudes don't shape our behavior, our behavior shapes our attitudes. When we behave a certain way that violates some kind of implicitly or explicitly held belief, we experience cognitive dissonance, a state of psychological discomfort arising from having two or more differing attitudes, beliefs, or cognitions. These attitudinal inconsistencies are uncomfortable, and so people are motivated to decrease them. Since we can't always change our behaviors, the actions in question may have already happened, we wind up changing our attitudes or beliefs instead. Related to cognitive dissonance is impression management theory which argues that people will lie about their attitudes to appear as though their actions are consistent with their beliefs. Attitudes can also be changed by persuasion, the process of changing an attitude towards something through communication from an external source. There are two main strategies used to persuade others, the central route and the peripheral route. The central route of persuasion is a direct route to attitude or behavior change that uses logic, data, and facts to convince people to make a certain choice. It works best when the target of persuasion is likely to focus on the information presented and evaluate it carefully. The peripheral route of persuasion is an indirect route to attitude or behavior change that uses a large number of superficial arguments. It's an effective approach when the target of persuasion is not likely to put deep thought into decision making. The attitude changes in response to the central route tend to be more long-lasting than those caused by peripheral persuasion. In marketing, effective sales and persuasion techniques use social psychology principles to influence people's choices. For example, the foot-in-the-door technique is a technique where the persuader gets a person to agree to a small action and then follows up with a request for a larger action. The opposite strategy is the door-in-the-face technique in which the persuader makes an excessive demand and then follows it up with a comparatively reasonable request. Another technique is the lowball technique, in which a person is persuaded to agree to an attractive offer and then feels obligated to honor the agreement even when the terms change. Although persuasive techniques can seem pervasive, it is possible to resist them. Being aware of persuasive tactics can reduce one's susceptibility to them. The inoculation effect occurs when people decrease their susceptibility to persuasion through exposure to positions that challenge their beliefs. By considering opposing stances, people are able to strengthen their own through counter-arguments.